this is the chapter three review for the test that will be on Friday. I'm gonna go through each of these. I believe there are 12 questions in this review. So I'll just go through these one by one. If your kid is trying to study, I would suggest that they take each problem at a time, uh, pause the video to make sure that they understand how to solve each problem. Looking at question one, it says Aaron puts three small cans, four medium cans, and five large cans on a shelf. How many cans does she put on a shelf? All right, so I know that she had three small. She has four medium, and she has five large and all of these have went on the shelf so since all of them are going on the shelf we don't that we need to add all of these together so four plus three or three plus four is seven so i know that seven plus five is and i'm talking about the five that's right here so 7 plus 5 equals 12. So my answer would be 12. Another way I could have solved that is I could have just um, drew 12 cans. So let me erase this. Another way I could have solved that is I could have done three small cans and I'm gonna put S for small four medium cans and five large cans and I would have just counted all those together so by counting those I would have said one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so there's different ways that you can get that answer, just whatever makes most sense to you. All right, looking at number two. Fill in the bubble next to the doubles facts that you could use to find the sum of three plus two. All right, so looking at this one, I like to look at what they've given me. So we have a three. So I could say 3 plus 3 because it has to be doubled. Or they also have a 2, so I could say 2 plus 2. Let's look at my options. So the first one says 2 plus 2. Well, yeah, that's right. 5 plus 5. Nope, that's not a double we said we could use. 3 plus 3. Yep, we said that was a double. And just like we did, 2 plus 2 was a double. And then 1 plus 1 was not a double. All right, scrolling on down. What does the number sentence have, or does the number sentence have the same difference as 14 minus 6? Well, first of all, I want to figure out what 14 minus 6 is. I know that 14 minus 6 is 8. And I could have just, you could have used your fingers to solve that. Normally, when I use my fingers, I start up 6, and I count up to 14, and usually you'll get 8 fingers once you count up. All right, so I'm going to look at these problems over here and solve them to make my job easier. So starting with that first one, 10 minus 1 is 9, 10 minus 2 is 8, 10 minus 3 is 7, 10 minus 4 is 6. All right, now, if we look carefully, we're looking for the same difference, which we said was 8 with 14 minus 6. So we're looking in this row right here, we're looking for an 8. Well, I see an 8 right here. So that one is going to say yes, but all the other ones are going to say no because the differences aren't 8. All right, moving on to the second page of the review. Mr. Brown 
sold five red backpacks and eight blue backpacks. Write the number sentence. Show how you can make a 10 to find the sum. Write the sum. All right, so what I like to do on something like this, like a problem like this, I always look at my bigger number. And I, we don't break down that bigger number. We like to keep that bigger number because it's closer to the 10 that I need to get to. Well, 8 plus what equals 10? So 8 plus 2 equals 10. Now watch this. Now we're looking over here by the 5, how it's breaking down. This is a like a number bond. So 5 broke down into 2. Well, 5 minus 2 equals 3. I have a 3 left. Well, I use the 2 right here to get to the 10. So I'll X that out. I'm going to use the 3 that I now have left and put it right there. It's 10 plus 3. So 10 plus 3 equals 13. So we know that up here, 5 plus 8 equals 13. They're getting you another way to think of the problem. It's the same problem. They're just getting you to think in another way how to get that answer by going up to 10. All right, find the number of shapes in each row. Oops. So I'm gonna count my rows. So I have one, two, three total rows, which is what they said here. I have three rows. But I need to find out how many are in each row. So one, two, three, four. I have four squares in each row. So I know four, I have three rows of four. Right here is trying to say, hey, I have three rows. But how many did I have in each row? Well, I had four four in each row. So four plus four plus four. What is four plus four plus four equal? Well, one of the things I could do is I could count up here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. So my answer would be 12. Another thing I could have done is I know that 4 plus 4 is 8. And then we have a 4 left over, so 8 plus 4 is 12. This is just some ways to think about this problem. All right, question 6. Tanya has and two friends put rocks on a table. Each person puts two rocks on the table. Draw a picture to show the group of rocks. So here I like to draw, there's three people involved. There's Tanya and she has two friends. So I draw three boxes to represent the people. So that's Tanya. Here's one friend and here's another friend. All right, so I'm putting two blocks in each. Because each person has two blocks on the table. It says draw a picture to show the groups of blocks. So technically the problem here would be 2 plus 2 plus 2. How many rocks did they put on the table? Well, 2 we can count by saying 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We could also just count it each box by twos. So we could have said two, four, six. Either way. How many rocks did they put on the table? Well, we already gave our answer was six. So six rocks. 
All right, I'm turning the page. I already started this problem, but I'll erase it. Lily sees 15 tan puppies and eight white puppies at the pet store. How many more tan puppies than white puppies does she see? Draw a picture and write a number sentence to solve. All right, so she sees 15 tan. And she sees eight white puppies. How many more tells me that I need to subtract? How many more tan puppies than white puppies? We're comparing two things. So how many more tan are there than there are white? So when it's worded this way, we need to subtract. I can say 15 minus 8 is 7. Our answer would be 7 more tan puppies. It also says, though, right here to draw a picture and write a number sentence to solve. So I wrote my number sentence, but I also need to draw a picture. Anything that typically shows um, that we had subtracted would be good. Uh, one thing that I would prefer to see here, we learned our model. That would be the easiest way to show this. I would say doing the model would be your best route when we have a big number. That big number. All right, and then we have eight. And then we're trying to find that missing number that we said was seven. Something like that would be appropriate. I would also take something along the lines of if I saw 15, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, All right, that's 15 circles. And then I know that this is my tan. And then my white. How many white puppies did I had? I had eight. And then finding the difference. So the easiest thing would do here, well, I see that tan's bigger. And I would take eight out of the tan. Six, seven, eight. And I could tell what my answer is by knowing what I have left over, which would be seven. So something just kind of showing where your brain's at there would be acceptable. I'll take either of these two types of drawings that we see here, or there's an explanation. All right, I'm going on down. Mark counts six ducks in a pond and some ducks on the grass. There are 14 ducks in all. Draw a picture to show the two groups of ducks. All right, so same thing here. I would be okay with that model that we've learned where the bigger numbers on the bottom six is one of the numbers all right and then we need to find out what was left and what's left is eight all right you could also say that since there were 14 ducks in all you could do something like drawing 14 circles so one two three four five six seven one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's 14. And then I could cross out six. And 
and I would have two, four, six, eight, eight left there. So something to kind of show me where your brain's at, because we had 14 in all, but there were six in a pond, and we're just trying to find out how many are on the grass. All right, write a number sentence that can help you find how many ducks are in the grass. All right, so what we could do here is we know that there's a total of 14. We were given the number six, and we needed to find that there were eight in the grass. So we said, how many ducks are in the grass? Well, we said eight were in the grass. And I can find that answer right here or right here. We gave that number. And just show me where your brain is at there. There are eight peaches in a basket. Mrs. Dalton puts seven more peaches in a basket. Complete the addition sentence to find out how many peaches there are now. So there are eight peaches in a basket. And we're adding, we're adding seven more. So we're adding that. And we're completing this addition sentence. So seven plus eight. Well, you can start at eight and count up seven eight so count up 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 that's up seven so there are 15 peaches and then this last page It says, use the numbers on the tiles to write the differences. Then write the next fact in the pattern. All right. So here, here, what you're going to do is the blue cards that you see are going to be what your what your differences or answers would be and I'll explain that and what I mean so for example the first one says 12 minus 6 when we know 12 minus 6 is 6 and that's actually a number card up here so yeah that works 12 minus 7 is 5 and I see that that's a card up here, so we're good. 12 minus 8 is 4. And I see that's a card up here, so I'm good. On this last part, it says write the next fact in the pattern. So you see that there's this line down here. We can't just leave this line blank. We have to put the next fact in the pattern. So I see right here that there's a bunch of 12s. So I know I'm going to write 12. I see right here that there's a bunch of minus signs. So I'm going to write a minus sign. But right here it's not all the same. Something's changing. So we start at 6 and we're going to keep going down. So 6, 7, 8. Well it's going up 1. So up 1 from 8 would be 9 equals, well what's 12 minus 9? Three. And we see also here going down six, five, four, then three. So, yes, that would be how you would do that. Looking at the right side, 11 minus six equals five. And you know that's right because that's right here. All right, 12 minus six is six. That's correct because it's up here. That's a difference. All right. 13 minus 6 is 7. It's also an option. And then looking at that last part, and we're still looking at patterns here. All right, so we see that this first row is actually changing. It's not the same. 11, 12, 13. And I'm going to underline it. 11, 12, 13. What comes after 13? Be 14. 
Well, all the signs are the same, so I would put a minus sign. All the six, all this row, or the column is the same. It's minus six, so we're going to keep that the same. Equals, well, 14 minus six is eight. And then if we look right here, we see it counts five, six, seven, eight. So there is a pattern there. All right, I'm going to scroll on down to 11. Jose wanted to share 18 strawberries with his brother equally. Draw a picture to show how Jose can share the strawberries. All right, so he wants to share 18 strawberries with his brother equally. So how is he going to do that? Hmm. Well, there's two of them. So you could do two of them, right? So there's two boys. There's Jose and his brother. And they want to share 18 strawberries. So I'm going to try to distribute 18 strawberries evenly. One of the best ways to do this, you could go and count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. All right, so each boy gets nine strawberries. And we can see that here. This would be Jose. And this would be his brother. Or you can show me something like this that would be a little neater. All right. I like when I have people involved, I like to draw boxes of and show what's going on. So I'm going to give one each. So one strawberry for Jose and then his brother. So one for Jose, one for his brother. And I'm going to keep counting until I get to 18. So th th three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I like this way better because it's easier to understand and distribute your strawberries until you get to that number 18. So again, this goes on, honestly, whichever method makes the most sense to you and you prefer. I prefer this way because it's easier for you to understand and get to that, um, the number 18. So they both have nine strawberries because in here I have nine and in here I have nine. All right, I'm going on down. Hank has 13 grapes. He gives five grapes to his sister. How many grapes does Hank have now? So remember how we talked about when something's disappearing, it's leaving forever, we're saying goodbye. It's not coming back. So we have to see this as it's disappearing, it's never coming back. So we're not getting more, we're losing it forever. And when you lose something, you're subtracting. So he had 13 to start with, but he gave away five to his sister. So now we need to figure out how many grapes does he have now. It says write a number sentence for the problem, which is what I've been doing. 13 minus 5 equals. And then it says use a square for the missing number, then solve. So I'm going to draw that square before I solve. So 13 minus 5 equals 8. So I'm going to put in 8. All right, that concludes our chapter review. If you have any questions, just let me know. I hope that made sense for you all. And thank you so much for your time.